Welcome to another episode of IHNA and IHM Career Australia. I am Vinesh Balan. Today we'll talk about different kinds of recruiters that we can that we find in the Australian job market and how to approach them. Australian job market works a bit differently compared to the rest of the world. The market isn't huge compared to other countries and as a result the the market is very relational and all it depends a lot on network and how who you know so there's a lot of emphasis on networking there is huge activity that rolls within a network and getting into it is crucial for job search recruiters are in front line of this activity however note that only 60 to 80 percent of the jobs are advertised in australia this means the stuff that you see on internet, be it on C, LinkedIn jobs or whichever website that you're looking at, is probably less than half of what is actually out there. Now let's take a look at the different types of recruiters out here. So let's talk about agency recruiters. These are the pro probably the first, uh, ki first kind of recruiters that you will get in touch with. Agency recruiters are most visible ones. and you they, they're on the front line any job most of the job ads that you see on seek or linkedin jobs are from agency recruiters now what do you mean by an agency recruiter agency by an agency it means that it's an organization that recruits candidates for different clients so they're completely a consulting agency their only objective is to find the best candidate and present it to the client the client will take a next interview and if they like it they'll hire them that's the agency recruiter process the next kind of recruiters that we find are internal recruiters so internal recruiters uh, they're, they're different from agency recruiters so internal recruiters work directly with the organization they do not hire for different clients instead they hire for their own company they are more involved they, they are more involved in fi fi uh, finding the best candidate possible uh, for their company uh, that match their values and the talent that they are looking for. So their activities would be more related, to, they're, they're high, heavily involved in graduate recruitments and other recruitment activities. The next kind of recruiters that we find are HR executives. These are actually HR professionals who has a lot of additional HR responsibilities and recruitment is a part of their responsibility. They might not focus all their energy on recruitment because they have a lot of other things to do and personally I think they recruit very senior professionals. Another set of people who recruit in the industry are hiring managers. They are not recruiters, their profession is not recruiting but typically for small to mid scale companies where there is no proper recruiting policy or a recruit recruiting system. Hiring managers directly meet people, find people, interview them and hire them. So there are a lot of people out there, you know, who can, who has the power to recruit people if they match the right talent. Now, why are there so many types of recruiters or what difference do they make? Each kind of recruiter works in a different environment. A company has a cost whenever they recruit a candidate via an agency. See if you if you get a if you are a hundred thousand dollar candidate, the agencies charge about ten to twenty percent of that the salary that you get. That could uh, that could come around you know ten to twenty thousand dollars, and that's a fee that the client has to pay the agency if they hire through an agency. On the other hand, if they directly hire you or any candidate, they don't need that uh, that extra charge. You know. So small to mid-scale organizations may not be able to afford these fees. However, there is another side to agency recruiters that they are in touch with top candidates in the market and the quality would be different compared to you looking or rather an employee looking directly for a candidate. Internal recruiters comes into picture where an organization does not want to work with agencies and they believe they can make up their own system they have their own system to find the right talent which align with the values of the company and the right talent pool having heavily recruiting companies would have an internal recruiter which also cuts a cost if opted if rather than going with an agency recruiter hiring managers on the other hand you know they they belong to small size and startups where you know their team is expanding but they don't have a proper recruiting system so they get out and 
do that they wear multiple hats and hiring is part of their their, their responsibilities now let's talk about how to approach recruiters there are many ways to approach recruiters and ideally you should start this before they put a put up a job ad the way i see it there are two types of two ways to job search active and reactive active job search is when you are already in touch with recruiters hiring managers prospective colleagues you know and you don't wait for the job ad to come up so that whenever the job requirement comes up the network reaches out to you and you have an immediate advantage over it on the other hand reactive job search is when you see a job ad and then you frantically try to connect to people in that organization be it recruiter hiring manager or whoever it is reactive job search is not the best way to do it but unfortunately most of us opt to that mode you know you see a job search and then you try to connect to people on the other hand being one step ahead would be a great would be a great advantage for you in your job search note that uh, all the content that i say has is is generalized view is a generalized view of the market every company or every agency has different policies or for that matter every individual has different views or perspectives on how the market works now let's take a look at some common ways on how to approach recruiters the most common method of approaching recruiter is cold calling if you're a sales person you know what cold calling is pick up the phone ring the person and have a chat this is hard this is extremely hard you know um, initiating a conversation it, it 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 could be at various stages of recruiting it could be when you see a job ad or it could be you know you know that this recruiter recruits in your space and you want to have a chat with them always keep in mind that a sale uh, to to have a good cold call you need to be good at selling yourself this is really hard you need to be good at talking and you need to be good at selling yourself and as any sales call the turnover can be very poor you make 100 calls you might get five or six good leads that work out always be prepared for that always be ready to take the disappointment and also note that recruiters are generally very busy and they have tons of other responsibilities to do every day to give an analogy of how what you're getting into uh take an example of you know uh for example in back in india uh you get tons of calls asking for a personal loan how do you respond to those calls sometimes you pick up sometimes you don't pick up sometimes you just uh respond rudely the same thing you're on the same uh you're doing the same thing over here too you're picking up the call you're disrupting someone's daily routine and you're asking for some time so make sure that that, that time is worth it preparation is key when if you are opting to cold call make sure that you have done your homework now let me pick let's see uh, i'll try to do a role play to give you an example of what's a good example of cold calling and what's a bad example of cold calling so let's 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 do a role play kind of thing So you find that uh, you find a job ad and you want to talk to a recruiter you ring the recruiter the recruiter picks up Welcome to the agency John speaking Oh hello is that John Yes this is John speaking Oh hi John how are you I am good thanks how can I help you Oh John I've just applied uh, for your job that I've seen online uh can you can we talk about that that's great which one the software developer job sure i've got eight different software developer vacancies at the moment can you be a bit more specific um um i'm i'm, I'm not sure i've i've applied for many roles so i i can't quite remember i'm sure it's that software java developer role that you put up okay what was the exact thing that you wanted to discuss well uh, i i just wanted to have a chat about the role just to know more information sure what would you like to know well i just wanted to know a bit more about the role now what are your thoughts on this video i'm i'm not a sales person but by the looks of it it hasn't gone so well you have not you are you are being generic you don't know what you're talking about you have you have done a lot of mistakes you have rushed into it you you don't know what the job description is it it it's like the recruiter doesn't want to give you time 
always do your homework make sure that you you know what you want to say and make sure that the recruiter wants to give you time that's key over here now let's take a look at a good example now let's take a look at a good example of how how you can do a cold call you ring up the recruiter and he picks up welcome to the agency john speaking hi john my name is vinesh how are you today very well thank you john i've applied for the senior friended role you've advertised with a cloud-based software company and was hoping you had a few minutes to discuss a few questions certainly vinesh what would you like to know great thanks john just to give you some background information, I'm currently working at Company X in a very similar role. I'm keen to know a little bit more about the tech stack used in this role and whether the company offers just one product or a whole suit. Now, what difference do you see? There, there are multiple things that I'd like to touch here. One, picking up the name. Always pick up the name of whoever you're talking to and that makes sure that you are paying attention or you have spend you you have a more personal connection to that person second thing is you were very specific on what you wanted to ask that way you know you didn't have you didn't have to ask the recruiter to spend energy and figure out what you are rather than you just gave out everything now the recruiter can just process your inputs and send up response immediately rather than thinking hey what sort of role this person is looking for what sort of uh, domain is this person looking for you have given it all so it makes the recruiter's life easier another very important thing that most people miss are you start a conversation saying that you know do you have a few minutes to have a chat always respect the time of whoever you're you're having a conversation with they might be in between a meeting and they thought you know it was an important call and they picked up the phone they might not be in the right position to talk so always ask the permission before having a chat that was a good example do you see a difference between the bad and good example so always do your homework it goes a long way similar to cold calling you can also do cold emails it's the same concept um, I'd recommend to do cold calling along with cold emails. Always send an email so that they have a reference of who you are and if you have a good chat, they can just pop up their email, look at your profile and get more details about you. So that can go in sync. There are a few things you need to keep in mind though. Always use appropriate long language. Aussie English is very relaxed and conversational. Don't write uh, things like, you know, uh, humbly sincerely request whomsoever it may concern that's not the way people talk over here so that's not the way you have to write an email be casual be on point and be precise also don't jump the gun say you know don't don't say the subject that i'm looking for a job no that's not how you should go have a good description it it could be a miniature version of your cover letter as well also do not be very vague be precise make sure that they have the details that you want the next best way to approach recruiters is through LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is massive, but it, it's, it's very good to find recruiters, but it's probably not the best platform to make a conversation or start a conversation. The problem with LinkedIn is it's easy. Everyone has it. So everyone does the same thing. If you look at a recruiter's inbox, there'll be hundreds of hundred messages. So if you send a message, it's even though you are the perfect candidate for a role or you're a great candidate, that message could be could go unread or into the bin or trash or wherever it ends. So you have to always use LinkedIn in a very, in, in, if you do LinkedIn in the right way, it's a very powerful tool. Otherwise, it just, it just fizzes out. Now, it's very important that you don't jump the gun in, in, on, on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I, I personally, I'm not a recruiter, but I get a lot of messages that look like, hey, I'm look, attaching my resume, I'm looking for a job, can you share it to your network? I, I help a lot of people, but it doesn't mean a random person who I have no idea who this person is, I have no idea what this person does, I, I, I won't be willing to help this person. I, I take time and you know try to understand what this person is, but not everyone does it. Not everyone has the time to figure out who you are, go through your resume and uh, refer to them to the network. You have to understand that when they refer you to someone in their network, there is a trust going on there. So if you end up being 
hopefully not if you end up being a bad candidate that hits the credibility of that person as well so you have to be very careful over there this is a very bad approach if you are trying to network on LinkedIn and I'd highly recommend not to do this now what's the best way to approach people on LinkedIn this is my take on it so before you uh, connect to this person follow this person there's an option to follow a person uh, on LinkedIn by following you get all the content that th this person likes shares or if he put some post comments or or articles you your uh, this will come up in your feed now engage in, in a, engage in a conversation in these content say example he puts a post write a nice comment on it asking a question or appreciating that person note that it this should not be a one word uh, comment like agreed congrats uh, well done no not that have a proper sentence do your homework understand what he has typed down and ask a, leg a good question or appreciate what he has done and share your thoughts now do this for maybe a couple of weeks and you know even though you both haven't chatted yet both of you know each other now would be the best time to connect send him a message saying hey i love your content or i love what you share i'd like to discuss more would you like to have a coffee uh, would you like to catch up for a coffee this should be your breakthrough and it's very likely that you'll get a response here rather than a cold message that say you know would like to uh, connect with you another important thing that you have to keep in mind here is the usage of word any when you say you know let me know if you have any opportunities you're putting the ball in the in the other person's court that person has to figure out okay what role does this person fit into what domain is he into what does he do why would a random stranger burn energy for you yes there would be some people but you have to give them a reason so always be specific and do your homework and make life for the other person easier the next best place to approach recruiters are through meetups and conferences and personally i think this is the best way to approach people but having a face to a name instead of just a virtual con conversation can do wonders you can express a lot of things instead of just type typing you can express a lot of things in person again the rule here is to not jump the gun and go around asking for a job just be curious talk to people learn what they do and what's happening in the industry just just have a casual conversation and eventually the question will come back to you as in what do you do again don't be desperate don't don't put a sign of desperation and say you know i'm looking for a job can you help me no just say you know you're exploring the opportunities what the industry look like i just came here to australia i'm exploring the country i'm just loving it just be casual and put it out there your key action over here should be that you should connect to this person on LinkedIn and send him a message the next day. Don't delay it. Send him a message next day saying that we had a great conversation yesterday during this meetup and would like to discuss more about more about whatever you were talking about over a coffee. This should be your goal. Your goal should be a face to face one on one conversation with this person. The next best way to approach recruiters or anyone is through references. Now, when you are referred to someone, the chances are high that that person cannot ignore you. It's not like a cold call or not a cold email. At least 70 to 80 percent chances that you will get a response and that's a high response and recruiters will go out of their ways to help you. After all, they, they earn commission when you get hired. So it's very important for them as well. A common complaint for most migrants over here are that they're new here. They don't know anyone. How do they get references? They, everyone can start networking. I've given you some examples of meetups, conferences, LinkedIn, uh, cold calling. Everyone can be. And, and this place, Australia, is a place where people network and build upon uh, this network. And that helps your career throughout. So it's very important that you go out. The best time was yesterday, the next best time is today. Go out, meet people and build your network. So hope you get a lot of value from today's episode where we discussed the different types of recruiters, how the Australian job market works and how to approach these recruiters. Keep in mind that networking is a very slow process. You have to have patience. It's not like you call 10 people or you go to 10 people and something will turn out. No, it might take a month, three months, four months or you never know what how long does it take but it these are the basic building blocks of job search and this is very much better than 
just applying online. If you have any questions and would or would like to know more about Career Australia or in general about how to approach recruiters, please write to us at m4tv at m4tv.com.au. Thanks for watching another episode of IHNA and IHM Career Australia. Until next time, bye-bye.